All right, guys, we are doing a very special edition of the Crimson Corner. Uh, Utah football is going to be on a short week, so it's going to be a little bit hard to try and get a Washington State analysis done in time before the game on Thursday. But uh, I do have a Washington State professor, actually, now that I think about it, on with me. Uh, And we are here to talk about something very, very important. Uh, It is the anniversary of Lauren McCluskey's death this Saturday. And uh, her mother, Jill, is so gracious to come on and join me and just talk about Lauren and some of the progress that we've hopefully made since that fateful day. Uh, What is it, like five years ago? Four years ago. Four years ago. Wow. Uh, Jill, how are you? I'm good, thanks. This is always a hard time for me, but it's helpful to to take part in some of these events that remember her and are making progress to help uh, other uh, victims that are when they're asking for help. Absolutely. Uh, so again, backstory on this story, Lauren uh, was a victim of domestic partner abuse. Uh, She broke up with the guy. The guy stalked her. She asked for help. She never got the help. And it ended in the most tragic way possible. Uh, He ended up murdering her and taking his own life in the process as well. Uh, Jill, I I don't want to talk about him at all because he does not matter. What I do want to talk about is who is Lauren in, in all of her essence? Uh, Lauren was just, she was sort of an ideal daughter. Uh, she was uh, she was a student athlete and earned a scholarship to uh, compete on the track team for at the U. Uh, she was a scholar athlete with, uh, her GPA was 377 and she was about to graduate. She cared about her friends uh, and enjoyed hanging out with them. She loved animals and she volunteered at the Humane Society to help socialize cats so they could be more adoptable. Uh, she liked, she loved to sing. She uh, would ask friends to come to church with her so she could belt out the songs. <laughs> and uh, she sang karaoke too. She loved, that was another thing she loved doing. Uh, and just a, just a wonderful um, young lady. What was it she was hoping to do after she graduated from the U? Uh, she was she was looking into uh, a lot of different things. She had started to look for jobs. She was really an, she was majored in communication, and she was an outstanding writer. And she in high school she had won an award for the best uh, writer in her school. Um, and but she was interested in something where she could interact with people. So she was also thinking about being an academic advisor, so she could help, especially help. Uh, student athletes navigate uh, being able to be successful academically while uh, while competing at at a high level. And what were some of her accomplishments with Utah Track and Field? Uh, well, she got she uh, got a honorable mention for all academic for uh, for the Pac-12, and uh, she was one of the top. Uh, she made the top 10 list for um, the pentathlon, so the five five event indoor uh, competition. Okay. Now, her situation is interesting because she did everything right. She checked check the guy out. She did what I do. I, whenever I meet someone new and they tell me what their name is and who they are and who they're about, I always go on the internet and check. Uh, and I, you know, so what, what, what are your feelings as a mom? You know, your daughter did everything right. She did what she was supposed to do and it didn't work out. Yeah, I think, I think she was, very trusting to begin to begin with and she I don't think she'd really run into someone who was who was basically a con man Mm -hmm. and he lied to her about his name his age his criminal history and and so uh and then so she did break up with him when she 
found out that information and uh, I know she well, she and she didn't tell me everything. And as a mom, I wished I wish she would have, but I I suggested that she talk to uh, her counselor about it. And so I know I knew that she was going talking to her counselor and she had actually met with her counselor on the day she was murdered. And um, and she was also I knew she was also talking to police, but I just thought that he was stalking her on the phone, you know, phone stalking her, but he was doing much more than that. And so I wish that she I wish that she would have known that she could she could have told me anything, you know, that I, so I, if I had known, you know, I would have come down there and helped and helped her. You know, when when the police, the police didn't help her, the uh, housing didn't help her. And counseling didn't really help her either. So I um, so I wish I I, w I just wish I had known. I actually spoke with a counselor. Um, at one of our memorial walks uh, that we had at the University of Idaho just a few days ago, and she said she said that she learned from this that um, that when she's talking with uh, people, patients who are victims who aren't who don't feel comfortable telling their parents, she will really push them to um, to talk to them and saying, well. If you were in danger, wouldn't they? Wouldn't wouldn't they be? Wouldn't they want to know? Wouldn't they want to help? And I think one of the more haunting aspects of what happened is you were actually on the phone with Lauren, and and heard her last words. And it wasn't "I love you, mom" or anything comforting. It it was something very scary. You know, as a parent, what was that like? Yeah, we would. She and I would talk every single day, and um, and so she was coming home from her she was coming home from her night class, and uh, and we were just having a, you know, a really nice conversation about her classes and you know and the things she was working on. She'd just taken an, an exam in the class and thought it went well, and and she did do well, um, and then I just heard her yell no 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 and I thought like did, did a car run into her or something like I didn't know what happened and it was it was just it was really horrible I knew that I knew that her life was in danger at that at that time but I was I was hopeful that she would be found and be okay and so you know you're thousands of miles away in Washington state what is the process of trying to get your child help when you're not close by? I, I did, um, I did call the police about her getting her car back because she had lent her car to, to this man. Mm -hmm. And, and so, and I told, I told the police that um, I wanted someone to be there when, um, when, when she picked it up because I was worried about her safety. And so, and then she got it back and it was okay, but I didn't, I, I wasn't aware of the ongoing problems. And so, so, I mean, in, in retrospect, I wish, of course, I wish I, I wish I was, but um, I wish I had been there. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting when you have, you have a child who's a young adult and you're you're trying to help them as much as you can, but you also want them to be able to to handle some of their own difficulties, you know, just like we all we all are growing up or had to do as we were growing up. But when it's but then there's there is a there's obviously a point where they need they need more help and and I guess the one thing to learn is to just keep emphasizing, you can tell me anything, keep that communication open. And I had told her, I had told her that, but I think she, you know, maybe she um, didn't, was ashamed that she was, had gotten in this situation. And I think that's a really good point as well. Uh, I think people look at Lauren's situation because it was so nationally known and, and, and part of it's because student athlete, uh, 
So, you know, it just makes it higher profile, but this is not an, an uncommon thing. This happens, you pull anybody, a uh, man or woman, you're going to probably run into someone that's been in a very scary situation like this. Uh, you know, what, what have you learned from this situation about domestic abuse and violence? I going into it, I, I've been, I had been fortunate enough myself that I had not experienced it. And I didn't, I didn't understand the seriousness and, and how common it actually is before, before, um, before we lost Lauren. And so I, I've definitely become aware of that. Um, I've had, I've had young women, a number of young women come up to me and say, I was in that situation. Uh, and, and actually hearing Lauren's story gave me the courage to, to get out, to get away from um, the abusive, the abusive partner. And I've also heard from a, a lot of moms who have, who have told me, basically asked for advice, how do I help my daughter get out of this situation? And, uh, and so you see, you understand how common it is. And, and then I'm much more, um, I feel every, I do feel the, um, the murders so much more of other, of other young women. You know, when I, when I hear about, uh, of there's been more um the international student mm -hmm. at 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 the U recently and uh just they they all affect me personally because I know the pain that goes along with it. You started the Lauren McCluskey Foundation in honor of your daughter. You know, talk about what that foundation's mission is and, and what it's done since it's been founded. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we founded the foundation to honor Lauren and the primary mission is campus safety. And that's really focused on the response to their, to victims. There are really a lot of, a lot of fantastic um, foundations that are for violence prevention or for helping victims recover, but there are very few uh, that focus on the response. So how to, how to improve the response. So um, some of the things that we're working on are strategic initiatives are number one, increasing awareness of the seriousness of campus, um, I mean, of dating, violence, and stalking. And so with that, we've, um, we've had over a um, hundred um, memorial awareness walks. So it's where, and it's usually, it's been around the, um, in October and around the, around the date of Lauren's murder. And so we're actually having one uh, today at the U at um, from one to three, and and that increases awareness. We're also we also have done some um, races for campus safety. We've done um, one every year in at at Washington State University. We're doing our first one in Salt Lake uh, on on Saturday, and so that helps. That also. In, increases awareness and it can and it can be as a, a fundraiser too for us. Um, the other one of the our I would say our most successful initiative is um, expanding the adoption of Lauren's promise and Lauren's promise is uh, I will listen and believe you if someone's threatening you. And so uh, so I and I was thinking what can I do as a professor to to help other um, young women or, or any victim, they can also be young men in that situation. And, um, and so you, it can be um, listed on a course uh, syllabus that the professor gives out. And then it's, it's, inviting, uh, it's inviting the person I, saying that I will listen and believe you if someone's threatening you and they can, and the professor can help um, connect the uh, the student to um, to resources and be an advocate for that student, and uh, and so we've had um, professors at um, two hundred and thirty seven universities have adopted it, and so it's that's really just and it, all over the world, you know, even Guam and Australia and in Europe, 
uh, and then um, we have we have stickers. Uh, Lauren's promised stickers, and that you could put on your. I actually I have one on my door, but you could put it on your laptop or or whatever. And we've we've mailed out um, over ten thousand stickers to just two individuals, and so we're so that's that's been going really well. Uh, we're also working to create a um, best practices blueprint. So we're working with um, some consultants on that. So just to what are the best practices so that so that what happened to Lauren um, doesn't happen in the future? How can you break down the silos that uh, are sometimes happen between um, housing, police, campus police, and and city police, and and also counseling? So what are the best practices? Uh, and then we are working on a campus safety score, and so that would be like. Um, you know, US News and World Report ranks universities, and we've been talking to them about including a campus safety score in that. And so, uh, so what we want to do is to create the incentive for um, for universities to adopt best practices, and that can be one of the ways that both st prospective students and parents can help, and it can help them when they choose a university. And so, we're just trying to. Um, create the incentives for them to do that. And then finally, we want to um, share resources for um, for dating violence and, and stalking and um, and also work with uh, share resources even to um, policymakers. I felt like one of the more stunning things from exactly when Lauren was murdered uh, was the candlelight visual that was held on campus. I went to it uh, and watching all the student athletes that rolled in. And of course, like, you know, the gymnasts and her track teammates and the women's basketball team, they were all visibly upset. And a, a big part of that is because I think they all kind of know and understand and have probably been in a situation that they can kind of semi-relate to what happened. And it was shocking and, oh my gosh, it could have happened to me. Mm -hmm. What I found interesting, though, was how men's basketball and football conducted themselves, and it was kind of stunning how rattled they seemed, uh, just very, very visibly bothered um, by that situation. And I know for a fact football still takes time every year to honor Lauren's memory. You know, what does it mean that the men's teams on campus particularly have taken this very seriously. Yeah, it it means so much and I know that it is genuine from them. I I've actually had um emails from you know uh football alumni players who were, you know, they've since graduated um that that they knew Lauren and and that it, how much it affected them. Um and it's 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 wonderful, and uh, I I've also I was just recently um, invited to talk with my um, with the football team at WSU, and um, and they and they they understand, and they they also want to make Lauren's promise and and really protect the help and protect the the women who um, who are who are on um, the WSU campus also. So I, I feel that uh, these athletes are, um, especially those those football and basketball players, but you know, all the athletes, mm -hmm. they're working so hard. And um, then there's such, so many of them are such um, young men of character. And I appreciate all the, um, all the support and the and just that you can tell that they understand and they mean they mean it since everything has happened you know what kind of progress do you feel like has been made and where do you think we still need to see improvement yeah so i i think the um i do think that the culture of the culture of that doesn't respond to women doesn't take it seriously doesn't doesn't uh, respond with urgency has changed a lot. Uh, I know that uh, at 
I sometimes talk with uh, Keith Squires, who is the VP for campus for safety at, at the U. And he told me that since since Lauren's murder, they have 94% um, of the hire, they have uh, replaced basically 94% of the officers have been hired after Lauren's murder. So it it is really a, um, it's a different group. They, t they take it very seriously. Uh, there's still a ways to go um, with uh, uh, Jifang um, Dong, uh, who was the recent um, young woman who was, who was murdered. Uh, it wasn't, it wasn't really the, I think the um, campus police did what they were supposed to do, but they were not informed about it. So it was uh, people in housing and residential education didn't do what they were trained to do. And so there's still some, that's an example of that there are, there's still a ways to go in, in training. And, uh, and also uh, we need to think about how there can be better, still better communication between the um, city police and campus police. But I think, I think that there is, there has been a lot of progress and I'm, I'm hopeful, I, but I know there's still a, way, a ways to go. I'm um, talking with uh, the state Senator, uh, Janie Iwamoto, and um, she's the one who who authored uh, some of the campus safety bills that happened right after we lost Lauren. And uh, she's concerned about that all the reporting uh, for the Clary Act, where you're reporting all the all the um, crimes uh, that 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 has not been. Uh, as extensive as it, as it should, so that's maybe another another area to work on. But I, I think we are making a lot of progress. I'm I'm hopeful. You you've adopted this saying about Lauren and what happened. Let her light shine. How do you want your daughter remembered? You know, as the years go on. Yeah, I um. I want her to be remembered as uh, someone who always cared about other people. So some of her former teammates told me that when they were new, so she was a senior when she was when she was killed, when they were new to the team, and if they were kind of by themselves, she would always come over and talk to them. She always was worried about other people. Uh, and always helping other people. She, uh, her friends were all sorts of people from, um, you know, it could be the, it could be the popular person, but it could also be maybe the um, disabled person that was struggling. And she, she was just a good person to friends. She, um, she loved animals and um, she was a hard worker and, um, and just a, um, I was proud. I was very proud of her uh, athletic ability, and she still holds a lot of um, youth track and field records in where I'm from. Uh, so I'm. I was just proud to have her as a daughter. Well, Jill, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to talk about Lauren and and some of the things you're doing to try and take a tragedy and hopefully help prevent future tragedies from happening. I it. It takes a brave person to, I think, pull yourself up by your bootstraps and, and try and do good on the situation. So I thank you. Well, it helps me. It helps me in my grief to work, to try to make progress in this. Thank you for, um, for inviting me. Okay, guys, that was Jill McCluskey, Lauren McCluskey's mother. Go check out their foundation, the Lauren McCluskey Foundation, and go make Lauren's promise. This has been another episode of The Crimson Corner. I am your host, Michelle Bodkin, your KSL Sports Utah Utes Insider, signing off as always. Go Utes. Go Utes. <laughs>